Hi, I'm Austin Murdoch. I graduated from Chesapeake in 2012. I'm a computer security research scientist. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email. It's simply my full name at berkeley.edu, or you can speak to Ms. Elsis or Ms. Maker about how to get in touch with me. So I'm here today to talk to you about what I have observed regarding success in high school. I always remembered having talks, and they would give me great and inspiring things, and they would give me these abstract thoughts, but not really give me any advice for how to break these things down and implement them. So I'll do my best today to break down everything I say, so if you decide you want to implement an idea, you'll have a basis for doing so. So show of hands, who wants to be successful? Everyone. Excellent. Excellent. So let's begin. What should you do to be successful in school? I had the opportunity to speak with some of your classmates last week about this question. Nina Quinn says, stay organized. They give you planners for a reason. Use them. They make your life a lot easier. Use different folders for A day and B day homework. Use a battery backup alarm clock. But most important, have a routine. When you're tired, stressed, or overwhelmed, having a routine to fall back on will keep everything running smoothly and stop you from making mistakes. For instance, if you write down the assignments that you were given in the previous class, or write down the things you need to remember from a previous event when you get to the next one, and you check your planner every time you brush your teeth, you will never forget something important that you need to do. Stay organized, have a routine. Thank you, Nina. Give her a hand for that. Give your classmate a hand for that. So while we're talking about organization, let's talk about time management. So there are three main factors I've observed to give you the greatest game in time for the smallest change in your habits. One, go to class. Take good notes. Most people will tell you to take good notes because they help you absorb the information or they serve as a reference for later. While this is true, it gives you something else, time. You won't need to spend extra time looking through the slides, reading and teaching yourself, trying to figure out what the teacher thought was important. So notes in class gives you more time. And when you have more free time, you get to have more fun. So I know it may not seem like it at first, but taking good notes in class gives you more time to have fun later. The second factor is recognizing distractions. And the distractions that really get us in trouble are the ones that aren't really particularly noticeable or very long. And since they're not very long, we don't really feel guilty while they're going on. They're easy to experience one after the other in something that I'm going to call they'll build a distraction chain. So you won't feel like you've wasted a bunch of time uh, as each thing is occurring. Uh, the best example of this is YouTube. So when you go to a YouTube video, they're only about 10 minutes long, but you have the related links on the right-hand side, and I'm guilty of this. You're clicking on the next one, and you, know, you click on five. They're 10 minutes long, and next thing you know, you've just wasted an hour of your time uh, watching YouTube. So it's important to realize when these things are happening. So you can either um, take drastic measures if necessary, uh, I'll give you an example. The, per the internet is a particularly good distraction for me, so I use a little timer in the top right-hand corner of my web browser. I believe it's called Chrome Nanny, and it will keep track of how long I am on certain websites, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of these things. The third thing would be making effective use of the time you have in between your events. So in college, your classes won't be one after the other like they are in high school. You may end up having a few hours in between the things you have to do. You probably won't want to start working on huge assignments during this time because you'll get interrupted, you'll have to go do something else, or you'll get ready for class. You have to figure out what works best for you. Uh, this, is, this is going to be different from each student, whether it be doing your laundry, catching up on emails, getting ready for class. Uh, this can apply to you as well while you're in high school on the weekends, whether it's be. But it's very easy to just you know, hop back in your bed or go sit down and you know, take a nap or watch Netflix until the next thing on your calendar comes along. Believe me, I've done it. So this, this is a huge time. This is a huge block of time in your schedule each week, however. It could be a couple of hours between class, a couple of times a week. You do that, and you know, you're looking at 10 or 12 hours that you could have been productive with. So choose something easy if you, know, you have a big event later, say you have calculus in the evening, you don't want to be extremely tired, something easy to do. So what else should you do? Oh, 
see here. So your classmate, uh, Max Gray, says, do your best. There we go, do your best. Yes, nothing is more important than hard work. Most people are going to tell you to work hard, and if you don't already have a workaholic complex, you may, after a day or two of trying to work a 60 or 80 hour week, burn yourself out. Giving this advice to people, for me, is sometimes like saying, you should be in shape, and then expect you to be able to run a marathon the next day. So when you get home, if you have trouble, for, especially for me, I would get off of the school bus and you, know, you kind of get relaxed after you've been on the bus, you're talking with your friends, it's hard to get back into the school mode. Try to do one homework problem before you go off and watch TV or, or do something else. And then when you feel comfortable with doing that, add another and add another. And you see where this is going, but eventually you'll get used to this prolonged effort and going straight back to working hard. For the group of us in high school that took six or seven AP classes, while we were working, while we were playing sports. Afterwards, we always wondered, uh, how did we do that? that? That didn't seem as hard as we thought it would be. And the idea is that over time, you'll get used to this uh, prolonged effort at working hard. So, um, so despite this advice, however, I would say it's very important to take breaks. I always take the last hour of my day to do something fun or relaxing because you need something to separate the work from one day to the next, or it will kind of start to run together. And that's a good way to get yourself burned out. So do your best, work hard. Fantastic advice. Give your friend Max a hand for that too. That's really great. So now you're working hard. So what, what do you do next? Work together. Find two or three other students who have the same goals and aspirations that you do and work with them as much as possible. You don't have to be best friends, but you should trust each other enough to compare notes and learn from each other. Work together. So no one is perfect, and you won't understand everything the first time. You can't go to every day of school, so you're going to count on your academic buddies to help you out. Everything's better with a buddy. <laughs> so hopefully working on assignments for long hours, you can make it a little easier and this may sound crazy, but it may even start to be fun. You know, at UMBC, uh, we'd sometimes have to go to the library on Friday nights and we'd be working together, you know, maybe while other kids are out having fun. But, you know, working together, we were able to make it a positive experience, um, which, you know, you're going to have to work hard when you get to these um, places. So, uh, let's see here. So my group sizes have grown over the years, but you can see a few of them here. This is a picture from Bodkin Elementary School. And uh, pictured on the left is the Bodkin chess team. So some of you have, may have seen this picture when you were walking by. Uh, that's me. And uh, so we wanted to be really good at chess and really good at math. So we would be participating in math superstars together. We would participate in the math bowl. And we really pushed each other to be good at math. And we worked together after school to be really good at chess. So here's the picture in high school, and this is a picture taken in our 11th grade BC calculus class. We also wanted to be good at math, but we also wanted to graduate top of our class and get into good programs. And I believe one through five of our graduating class were actually in this picture. Uh, so Jamie, uh, he's in the back there, was actually our valedictorian, and he went to Brown. Uh, Connor, not in the picture, but certainly in our group, was salutatorian, and he got a full ride to Alabama. Carly Bear was the highest scholarship winner that year, and she went off to Carnegie Mellon. This is my college cohort, and we all want to be doctors. <laughs> if the statistics are up to date and correct, 90% of the people in this picture will go off to some form of graduate school. So working with people who have the same goals as you is extremely, extremely powerful. The next thing I would tell you to do is work with the system, not against it. Talk to your teachers. This may have come as a surprise to you, but teachers are people too. It took me kind of all of middle school to get this one right, but if you can figure out what they think is important, you can probably figure out what's going to be on the test. You're going to need their support for recommendation letters, and you already know this, but they give out the grades. So knowing your teacher will be very helpful. The next would, thing I would tell you would be get comfortable studying for and taking tests. This will helpful, help you when the stakes are high. So learn your test taking strategies. If the, if the test doesn't penalize you for guessing, 
guess on all the questions and do whatever you need to do to get yourself in a great and happy mood for taking the test. You know, this may sound a little silly, but some of my friends and I, when we go into college, we'll dress up for the exams. And it, it, it's a little weird, but it makes us feel good. And, you know, you really want to get in the spirit of, I can, I can take this test. I can ace this if I need to, to get that A. And, you know, really be proud of competing, just like you would in a sports competition when you go in and take an exam. The next thing would be, I would say, is know how your GPA is calculated and put, put classes into the time you're doing the worst in or the assignments where you have the lowest performance. I know a lot of us don't like doing things that we're bad at, um, but you really must. Uh, so often people put too, too much time into homework assignments for a class that they ace, they're acing because it makes them feel really good and they know what they're going to do well, but you have to put effort into the classes that you're not doing so well in. And a really good example of this is that if you're above a 90, then you get an A. So if you have a 99 and an 89, well, that, that doesn't help you. Uh, but if you can uh, put the effort into the class in which you have an 89, you can get two 95s, and now you have two A's. So you're staying organized, you're working hard, you're working together, you're working with the system, so now you need to take control of your education. Remember, the things you learn now, you will use for the rest of your lives. This is true because of the nature of how time works, but also because the things you learn build on each other. Also, if you AP out of a course in high school, it may be the last time that you get to take a subject. Don't be afraid to seek help to augment what you're learning in the classroom or from the textbook. There are many resources online you can use for help. Uh, for example, I use Mr. Burnett's chapter notes to pass AP World, and even YouTube can be extremely helpful. Uh, I use a YouTuber named Patrick JMT for all three levels of calculus. And if the school doesn't uh, let you configure a schedule in a way that you're happy with, stand up for yourself. My friends and I had to work hard to get the high school to let us take AP classes as freshmen, but they eventually let us, and I think that's a policy now that uh, you can go ahead and do that. Excellent. So, you know, you can work with your school and administrators to make sure that you get your um, aspirations heard and that you get to do what you want to do. Uh, so, and that brings me right to my next point. Make friends with your administrator and guidance counselors. Uh, you, we had Ms. Elsa's come up and we have Ms. Maker and th they're here to help you. And uh, knowing them, we always say, make your friends before you need them. So it's very important that you meet with your guidance counselors, you speak with them, you talk to them about what you want to do. This will be extremely helpful. Now, if you have a topic that you're interested in and they don't teach a course, um, or you want to learn more advanced skills, don't be afraid to teach yourself. We're so lucky to live in the information age and have access to public documentation and Wikipedia. And I will make a statement. I was accepted to several PhD programs with a research focus in security before I took my first course in security, which was my last semester of college. So if I had waited to take my first computer security course before I had started to learn about it, I wouldn't be where I am today. I would like to take a moment to point out that the path you take is not as important as what you get out of it. So I often ask people, uh, where are you going to college? What are you doing? And I'll hear, Anne Arundel Community College. And I say, uh, what was that? And they'll say, uh, Anne, Anne Arundel Community College. And I, I don't always understand this response because I'm saying, that that's great. Uh, you're pursuing your education. You're saving money. You're getting ready to focus on the next your four years of your education. I would say just make sure the classes you take are transfer transferable and get good grades. I heard uh, just the other day, I was reminded of a system that, universe, that the Maryland system of school has where you can match up your community college credits with the credits that you'll get in college. Look up which AP classes are going to count before you go and figure out the scores you're going to need to get it on the exam. I found out that I was going to need a four on AP Calculus only a few days before the exam, but I was able to study to get myself from a three to a four because I knew that's what I needed to have it count. So it was recently on the news that one of the students who got accepted to all eight Ivy League schools chose none of them. It was because another school gave him a full ride and he knew that if he worked hard, he could go to any of the schools on that list 
for graduate studies. So my point is this. You can graduate from Chesapeake or AACC or UMBC or UMD and still do anything you want to. It does not matter what school you go to. Your education will be what you make of it. And so the next thing I will tell you would be to think about your future. The earlier you start to figure out what you want to do, either in school or in the next stage of your education, the better off you will be. Now, now don't freak out. Uh, <laughs> a lot of students don't know exactly what they want to do, but you should try to work on figuring out the area. Think about school, which class is your favorite, or which class you hate the least, I, you know, whichever way you want to look at that. And if possible, talk to the people who work in the field. Uh, when I was in middle school, I was, knew I liked computer science and the things I saw about cybersecurity. And my friend Jamie, who I talked about previously, his father worked in cybersecurity. And a couple of times a week, I would go talk to him about his work experience. And uh, that's how I ended up deciding that this was the field that I wanted to go into. Plan out your course schedule. If you participate in Chesapeake's intern, want to participate in Chesapeake's internship or jumpstart program senior year, make sure you've taken the course requirements to enable you to do so. Keep in mind, this may take about three years of preparation, so you may be wanting to start thinking about this when you're a freshman, so you have these opportunities as a senior. I certainly know that if you want to go into a PhD program after undergraduate, you should start thinking about taking research opportunities when you're a freshman in college. The next thing I would say would be start building your career. There we go. Think about your future, yes. Start building your career. If possible, always choose a work experience or internship that will give you experience in your field, even if it pays less money. And don't be afraid to volunteer just to get something on your resume. It's a lot easier to go up to someone and say, I don't have any experience, but I'm really interested in X, and I really want to help you. Now, uh, this, this will enable you to put something on your resume later, and they'll probably write you a recommendation letter. So you might be saying to yourself at this point, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Austin. This sounds, this sounds awful. What, what about fun? Do you, do you have any fun? Uh, so yes, make sure you have time for fun. Just remember, you don't have to do everything. Don't go to every party, but make sure you go to your prom. Don't go to every football game, but go to the Dina Bowl. You don't have to play every sport, but try to letter in one. I will also say it really, really helps if you can find a club or program that will augment the things that you're interested in, either in your career or in school. So we have a lot of great programs here. You can join the math team. There's a robotics team. There's um, all, all sorts of different teams and clubs that you can do. And when you're going to employers, they really like to see this extracurricular activity that is also fun and also supports what you're doing in the classroom. So the other thing would be make quality friends and have quality downtime. You aren't going to be able to keep in touch with all 300 of your friends or your Facebook friends forever. So I will leave you with two things. I know you'll remember them because they are on posters on almost every high school that I have visited. Uh, the first one would be the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. So put in the extra effort it takes to get that A. For example, go to the class review sessions. I'm always amazed at people that don't go to the class review sessions. Even in college, last semester, I was there probably for the professor came for an hour and he's talking about all the things that are going to be exam. It's one hour, say out of one and a quarter hours, times two times a week for maybe 15 weeks, which works out to be about 3% of your time, which may make the difference between you getting a B in the class or an A in the class. Also, don't spend eight hours writing a paper and then not take the few minutes to read it over and catch the little mistakes before you turn it in. And this one means a lot to me, but pull that last all-nighter when you're in college to get the last section of your programming assignment done. The extra effort may not seem substantial at any one time, but one B or C every semester will make a big difference over the course of four years. So you'll want to be able to get excellent grades semester after semester, and before you know it, you'll have earned a 4.0 for all four years, and you'll be on your way. You've probably heard this one before. 30 years from now, it won't matter what shoes you wore, how your hair looked, what jeans you bought. What will matter is what you learned and how you used it. 
And, and this is a really, really great quote. Uh, the problem is that, uh, I, with this, for me, was that 30 years seems like a long time. Uh, so the idea is that you won't have to wait 30 years to reap the rewards of working hard in high school. Um, the lesson here is, is, is still important. Uh, we, don't, we don't always get to see the fruits of our labor when we're in ninth grade or 10th grade or 11th grade until all of a sudden you're at senior awards night, everyone's up on stage, they're getting thousands of dollars in scholarships, and um, okay. So I stand here before you today just three years after graduating from Chesapeake. So it's something to think about would be that the freshmen who were in high school when I was in high school just graduated on Tuesday. So I was in high school the same time that some of the students here are in high school now. And I would say it's important that you have faith in yourself and in the fact that hard work in high school is going to pay off. Keep an eye on the bigger picture. This is important. When I was a freshman in college, I heard Dr. Urbowski, the president of UMBC, say something that I will never forget. And it was, if a student has a sense of self, it's amazing how the dreams and the values can make all the difference in the world. I know most of you here today are fifth graders and eighth graders, and I wish you the best as you move on to the next level of your education, and I'm sure you're a little apprehensive, but keep focus on your sense of self. Focus on your dreams, focus on your values. Focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm.